How's it going everybody? Data here and welcome back to another NHL 21 career simulation. Today taking on the career of Trevor Zegris, the ninth overall pick in the 2019 NHL entry draft to the Anaheim Ducks. EA just put him into the game about an hour ago at the time of recording this and he has played two NHL games now in the real world so that has made him eligible to be created. So today we're going to be covering his career, a very very highly touted prospect. Drafted in 2019 like I mentioned. He was a monster with the U.S. development system, as you can see on the stats on the screen right here. Boston University, 36 points in 33 games. AHL went over a point per game with 9 in 8 with 4 goals. And then in the NHL, he's now played 2 games at the time of recording, as I mentioned. No points yet, but who knows, maybe he tore it up in my fantasy lineup last night. And we're going to hop into his career. Zegers is obviously very well known for his recent performance at the World Junior Championship, as he scored 18 points in 7 games with Team USA and lit the hockey world on fire. So this career simulation is a bit of a longer one as compared to other ones you may see on YouTube. If you've seen the Lafreniere simulation, or the Lucas Raymond simulation. They usually take a bit longer because we like to look at the team surrounding the player. So I take control of a random Eastern Conference team. Everything is auto, auto trades, auto sign free agency, auto draft, all that good stuff. And we are just solely watching the career of Trevor Zegras, where he signs, where he plays, the records that he may break on Anaheim or elsewhere. Really anything could happen. So looking at his profile now here on NHL 21, he is starting off at 19 years of age on the San Diego goals 78 overall with medium elite potential he is center slash left wing not great face-offs but i'm sure those will grow nicely he has really really nice puck skills for a 19 year old especially the 87 deking and then in the sense is the 84 offensive awareness so uh i don't know how he's going to simulate because i'm watching it for the first time with you but i would assume that this is going to be a very nice career for trevor zegris already three star shooting off the bat great skater not super physical but you don't really need to fights if you can just keep putting the puck in the back of the net right so starting off here in year number one realistic pretty you know it's pretty realistic he just got called up to the nhl but before that he was in the ahl so for the 2020 21 season trevor zegas will be starting on the san diego goals on the top line with sunny milano and isaac lundstrom and pretty much we're going to just run through this first season see how it goes and hope for some nhl action in year number two In year number one, the Anaheim Ducks somehow finish 12th in the NHL and make the playoffs with a record of 43-32-7 with 93 points. So hey, hats off to you, Anaheim. Trevor Zegers ended up getting to suit up for 44 games in the NHL, scoring 5 goals and 7 assists for 12 points points with a negative five not too shabby at all getting about 10 minutes of ice time per night over on the fourth line with power play action so with all that ice time and some pretty good development he's up to an 82 overall and is now listed as a third line scoring forward and in the playoffs the anaheim ducks somehow brought the eventual stanley cup champion edmonton oilers to seven games in round number one it was pretty smooth sailing for the Oilers after beating Anaheim in Game 7 of the first round, but hey, Anaheim really put up a fight. In those seven games, Trevor Zegras was second in team scoring with a goal and three assists for four points and was a plus three, so very nice. Great season of development, like we said, up to an 82 overall. Deakings at 92, already four and a half star puck skills, three and a half star shooting. 86 offensive awareness, four-star skating. This man is looking like a beast. Let's get a nice off-season of lifting some weights, eating well, working hard, and I'll see you in September for year number two. And of course, not really to anyone's surprise, Trevor Zegras did not break any rookie records for Anaheim in that first season, nor did he win the Calder Memorial Trophy as Kirill Kaprizov ended up taking it home for the Minnesota Wild. My goodness, year number two, let's get ready to rock and roll. Trevor Zegers up to an 86 overall. 86 overall, listed as a first line forward. 20 years of age, five star puck skills, four star senses, shooting, defense, four and a half skating. This man went to Gary Roberts off season training facility and just came out looking like an absolute animal. Still only three-star physical, but who could care less about that when you have 89 offensive awareness, 97 deking, 91 acceleration and speed. That's just insane. Playing first line with Mike Hoffman, who signed a four-year contract. Okay, that's, that's pretty interesting. 
Rickard Raquel on that top line as well. And then Ryan Getzlaff still at an 86 down on the second line. Yafalo, Silverberg. I like this team very much. Now we can look at it a bit more since he's Zegris is uh, centering the first line. Dominic Cahoon down there. Lindholm, Manson, Jamie Drysdale up to an 83. Cam Fowler, Shattenkirk, and of course John Gibson. Still with Ryan Miller at the age of 41 backing him up. Uh, great, great depth. What? This rebuild in Anaheim may be uh, a lot shorter than we thought. Let's hope for a big year from the Ducks. And wow, I'll see you at the end of the year number two. In year number two, the Anaheim Ducks once again made the playoffs, this time just by the skin of their teeth as the Dallas Stars, with the exact same record, just had one less ROW. It was a very tight one, but with a record of 40, 35, and 7, the Anaheim Ducks had 87 points, and 18th place was good enough to make the playoffs. This was a huge shock, though, as Trevor Zegris looks like his season was cut extremely short due to what must have been a massive injury. I'm assuming four games into the regular season, he had three points through four games, and then was out for the next 78 games with, I don't know what the injury is, as I can't go to the injury report. Once again, it would be nice if I had a Trevor Zegers alert, but that is just wild. He is, remains at an 86 overall, I, I suppose. I don't think anything else has gone so up. So I guess but. that's why Ryan Geslaff was playing in such an increased role as first-line center with 58 points, Raquel at 83. So the Ducks still did well, but they would have done that much better had Zegers not been injured. And that's really rough as well, considering the playoffs here, as the Ducks made it all the way to the conference finals, but in back-to-back -back years now, lost to the eventual Stanley Cup champion, this time being the Vegas Golden Knights, who beat Anaheim in six, and then beat Buffalo in six to win the Stanley Cup. Zegers was not healthy enough to make the playoff roster as he did not play in any playoff games. And will be headed into the final year of his entry-level contract. Uh, I'm not sure if he'll grow over the offseason. I guess it really depends on what that injury was. And as rough it is, as it is, I do appreciate some of the realism here. As often in career simulations, you'll get like... 20 seasons of 82 games played and they break the all-time games record of Marlo, uh, Patrick Marlowe's record or something like that's not you know th these prospects aren't all going to be playing 2,000 games so I guess that's nice but man what an what a devastating injury that must have been all right year number three and Trevor Zegras is healthier than ever at an 89 overall to start up his third NHL season. First line center uh, listed as a first line forward. Five stars in the puck skills and the skating category as the 98 D-King and everything else is just absolutely insane with 90 offensive awareness. Still on an entry level contract to have numbers like that. 92 acceleration. The guy's just speeding down the ice and has hands of silk. On his top line is Isaac Lundstrom who's growing absolutely beautifully. 86 out of 22, uh, at 22 Two years of age with top six potential. Mike Hoffman rounds out that top line and the entire forward depth on Anaheim is quite solid. Uh, Ryan Getzlaff at the age of 37 still around at an 83 overall. Drysdale up to an 86 and the defense is very solid. This is an amazing team I have to say. John Gibson at an 88 overall backed up by 42 year old Ryan Miller who somehow still maintains an 80 overall. That's wild. 281s is depth. Wow. <sighs> Without Zegers to make it to the conference finals, this could be a Stanley Cup winning season for the Anaheim Ducks in year number three. In year number three, surprisingly, the Anaheim Ducks didn't do super, super well, but still well enough for a third consecutive playoff berth, finishing 14th in the NHL, 92 points, and a record of 42, 32, and 8. It was a breakout season for Trevor Zegers as he played in all 82 games and scored 25 goals and 41 assists for a total of 66 points to share the team lead in points with James. Amy Drysdale, pretty surprisingly. Negative 13, though, and I just have to note, besides him going up to a 90 overall, before we move into the playoffs, I just have to note that actually he didn't get injured in last season in 2021-22. He got sent down to San Diego. So I was just totally shocked. I didn't even think about that possibility, him being an 86 overall. So when I was just praising EA for their realism that a guy, oh man, it's so sad he has a big injury. No, it was just an 86 overall first line center getting sent down to San Diego. So maybe you could say there was some sort of like uh, attitude issue, maybe, but he did score 59 points in 63 games down there. 
So just to know that that is now part of his career and that's what happened year number two. So apologies that I didn't catch that, but once again, unfortunately, no Trevor Zegers alert. So it's hard to tell things that happen. And, you know, if I was able to look at an injury report, I would have realized, oh, hey, Trevor Zegers isn't on the injury report. But no, once the Stanley Cup has been awarded, you're not allowed to look at the injury report anymore. That makes a lot of sense. So thank you, EA. Anyways, it was a round one heartbreak as the Ducks dropped their first round series against the San Jose Sharks in seven games who went on to lose to the Coyotes who lost to the Stars who lost to the Leafs so congratulations the Anaheim Ducks were the 2023 Stanley Cup playoff ultimate losers in the playoffs Trevor Zegers put up four points in six games not sure why he didn't play in the seventh perhaps due to injury one goal three assists and as previously mentioned he is now up to a 90 overall so that's going to be huge as his entry-level deal is expiring and he will be commanding a lot of money with those <laughs> 99 deking, 98 passing, 98 puck control, 91 offensive awareness, becoming a very good defensive player as well with 89 defensive awareness and 90 stick checking. His shooting accuracy is off the charts. He's becoming more of a physical player. He maintains the five-star skating and man, it just doesn't get much better than this. Ah. Trevor Zegris is going to be paid big time. I would imagine that it's going to be a bridge deal, but we'll see what happens moving into year number four. Heading into year number four, Trevor Zegris maintains his 90 overall, and he is on a bridge contract two years at $6.610 million with an AAV of 3.305. Definitely not very expensive. That's a steal of a bridge. He's going to get paid big time afterwards. I don't believe any of his attributes have changed since we last saw him in the offseason. He's playing on the first line with Dominic Cahoon and Mike Hoffman, who's in uh, still two more years left. He's been doing all right with Anaheim. Yafalo, Lundstrom, Silverberg, Adam Henrique down on the fourth line. James Neal is here. A bit of a different looking team, but Ryan Getzlaff has not retired. So I guess maybe he's even either in the minors or he got moved. Uh, and then on defense, of course, Drysdale at a 90 overall now. The defense is still very solid. And John Gibson at an 89 overall, backed up by Yoel Hoffer, as I'm assuming that Ryan Miller probably called it a career finally. So year number four, we got first line, we got power play, all that good stuff. 66 point season last year for Zegris. How can he do in his first year off of the ELC? Year number four was a great one for the Anaheim Ducks, as not only did they finish sixth in the NHL, but they won the Pacific Division with 105 points, going 49, 26, and 7. However, it was a really weird year for Trevor Zegris, as he played in all 82 games, but only scored 50 points, 22 goals and 28 assists. Meanwhile, guys like Steele, Cahoon, Yafalo, all forwards who scored more, even Jamie Drysdale at a 64 point season, great year from him. So really weird as he dropped to an 89 overall as well. In the playoffs, the Anaheim Ducks once again fell in the first round in seven games and for the second straight season were the ultimate losers of the playoffs as they lost to the Coyotes, who lost to the Flames, who lost to the Jets, who lost to the Lightning. So congratulations, Anaheim. Definitely not easy to achieve such an honor. Four points in seven games for Trevor Zegras as he played in all seven. And like we said, he dropped to an 89 overall. He's going into the last year, well, the second year, second and last year of that bridge contract. So if he wants to get paid big time, he's going to have to wake up a little bit. Still has the five-star puck skills, five-star skating. Nothing really to worry about, but let's work hard in the offseason. Three and a half-star physical, let's get back to four. Call up Gary Roberts, work hard, pump iron, and I'll see you in year number five. In year number five, Trevor Zegers did not listen to me over the offseason and remains at an 89 overall with that three and a half star physical. Everything else, though, is looking fantastic. 99 deking, 98 passing and puck control, 97 hand-eye. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Face-offs up to an 82 as well, which is great as a centerman. His new left winger, Jason Zucker. Uh, Mike Hoffman still on his right wing now at the age of 34. Lundstrom, Cahoon, Steele, Comtois, all these other names. A lot of uh, a lot of names that are, that are uh, actual Anaheim players, which is nice to see without the team just being totally overhauled. Defense still looks very solid with Drysdale at a 90 overall. And John... John Gibson at a 91 is starting, backed up by Pavel Fransuz at a 78. So in year number five, Trevor Zegers has a lot to prove after a bad offensive season. He wants to make money. Does he want to stay with Anaheim? I guess we'll find out. 
and we'll see what happens with the team as a whole. Year number five was another solid one for the Anaheim Ducks as they finished eighth in the NHL with 97 points and a record of 44, 29, and 9. Quite consistent in that same area of win losses and overtime losses. Trevor Zegras finally went off as he scored 32 goals and 42 assists for 74 points playing in all 82 games. You absolutely love to see that, finally, especially in the last year of that contract. Lundstrom, Steele, Drysdale, everyone else pitched in, but Trevor Zegris finally getting to be the focal point in Anaheim. In the playoffs, the Ducks swept the Oilers in the first round, but then lost in five to the San Jose Sharks, who would go on to lose to the Winnipeg Jets, who won the Stanley Cup in seven games in an all-Canadian matchup against the Ottawa Senators. Once again, it seems as though Zegris had some sort of injury, as he only played in six of the nine games games through the two rounds he scored five points in those six games and headed into year number six he has grown back to a 90 overall restored himself with that four star physical i think everything else is pretty much the same maybe offensive awareness up by one perhaps his two-year bridge deal has expired and moving into year number six this man is about to get paid so let's check out what happens in the off season and see where we are for the beginning of year number six also, for anyone curious, in the year number five offseason, Ryan Getzlaff called it a career at the age of 40. He ended up going to the Boston Bruins for two seasons and then for, uh, over to Florida for one in years number three, four, and five. He goes out with 1,230 points in over 1,400 games played. Ready to go for year number six, Trevor Zegris at a 90 overall, ready to go here in Anaheim. He didn't sign the deal we were all thinking about. It's actually another bridge contract. Two years at 14.76 for an AAV of 7.38 million per season. That's interesting because I believe that will bring him to UFA status after these two seasons. So, you know, I guess it's understandable that the Ducks maybe don't want to commit to Zegris big, big money yet, as he only had one really good season but it is a bit risky as he does have the possibility to walk. Either way, he's playing on the top line with Cahoon and Garland in year number five. Second line is wonderful, great depth. Third line gets a bit wonky, then the fourth line is really weird. Trevor Wong is here, which is awesome. It's a fourth round pick in 2021, NHL franchise mode legend as he, I guess he got uh, nerfed a little bit by EA and uh, Zach Stringer. So two 70 overall prospects on the fourth line, not great. Defense, it took a big hit this offseason, it looks like, as only Fowler, Drysdale, and Manson are still here. And goaltending-wise, it's Gibson backed up by Kirill Bobkov, a third-round pick elite prospect, 82 overall at 8, 22 years of age, possibly the future, come to a healthy scratch. So without further ado, let's check out year number six. Zegris' uh, attributes are still just as good as ever. The defense just keeps getting better as well, now at 84 face-offs, so a real bona fide number one center here in the NHL. And let's see what he can do. It was another close one, but in year number six, the Anaheim Ducks once again made the playoffs as the last team in, finishing 19th in the NHL, but in that weaker Western Conference, a record of 39, 34, and 9 with 87 points was just enough to squeeze in. Trevor Zegris put up new career highs in goals, assists, points, shots, all that good stuff. 79-point season, 33 goals and 46 assists, playing in all 82 games. Really what Anaheim needed as a leader in the points category, as he has good support, but was the number one guy. Also super interesting to note that this Ducks prospect, Liam Franzen, who was a sixth-round pick in 2022, Played in 77 games, put up 40 points, and won the Calder Memorial Trophy as the best NHL, NHL rookie. 23 years of age, just making the NHL debut after a late pick. That is a super cool story. Now, in the playoffs, it doesn't get more heartbreaking than this. In round number one, the Ducks swept the Avalanche. They took out the Jets in five, the Flames in six, and then lose in seven in the Stanley Cup Finals to the New York Islanders. The last team to make it into the playoffs, they sweep the strong avalanche, four, five, and six game series. And then in the Stanley Cup Finals, in game number three, John Gibson goes down with an injury. I'm not sure what it was, but it told me that he was out for five weeks, so it was pretty serious. The backup had to come in, played well but just not well enough, I suppose, as the Islanders took it in seven. John Gibson was putting up insane numbers, and Bobkov played well, but just, wow, to have Gibson go out with injury in the Stanley Cup Finals, that just hurts. 
that just hurts on another level. Trevor Zegers put up 22 points in 22 games, point per game, 7 goals and 15 assists. Jamie Drysdale went off. He's growing super well. And heading into year number 7, Zegers grows to a 91 overall, 92 offensive awareness, 90 defensive awareness, still the 5-star skating, the 4-star uh, shooting, and the 5-star puck skills. All that good stuff, and he'll be heading into the final year of that two-year bridge. So he's looking to get paid, like we said. And if he'll be going into UFA eligibility, we're going to have to hope that the Ducks have a really strong season after showing that they have what it takes to make it all the way to Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Finals. Starting off year number 7, Trevor Zegras has Connor Garland at an 86 on his right and JVR at an 83 on his left at the age of 37. He is centering the top line as always. Very nice growth from guys like Steele, Lundstrom, the guy who just won the Calder Trophy, Friends, and is not in the lineup, not sure why. Ruslan Leonov, a first round pick, power forward, five star shooting, looks like a, to be a nice prospect growing over here. Decent depth on defense. We got Drysdale at a 91. Manson still here at an 82. Aside from that, I guess pretty much everyone else has left the team since we started the franchise mode. John Gibson, 89 overall, still starting. Backed up by now an 85 overall Kirill Bobkov. That's great growth for the future as well. Uh, attributes seem to be the same as when we last left him off. 91 overall with all those puck skills and shooting and skating. Beautiful, beautiful numbers. And as we said, expiring deal. So we're going to have to hope for another big season for the Anaheim Ducks coming off that Stanley Cup final heartbreak. In year number seven, it was a seventh consecutive playoff berth for the Anaheim Ducks and the second time that they've won the Pacific Division in seven years as they finished fourth in the entire NHL with a record of 48, 28, and 6 for 102 points. Trevor Zegers once again set new career records in goals, assists, and points as he went over a point per game, playing in all 82 and getting 86 points with 38 goals and 48 assists. JVR on his wing scoring 43 goals was a huge reason for that success. Jamie Drysdale, great season from him as well. The goaltending was solid, so exactly what Anaheim needed. And in the playoffs, for the first time in any career simulation that I've ever done, Lafreniere, Raymond, the both Lafreniere videos, the team that we are following wins the Stanley Cup as Trevor Zegras leads his team to glory, making up for last season's Game 7 loss against the Islanders. This time they go all the way back to Game 7 again against that same team, but this time they get the job done. It was a roller coaster to get there as they swept the Flames, but then the second, third, and fourth round were all won in Game 7 fashion. I wish you could go in and see the Stanley Cup celebrations of other teams as we would have loved to see Trevor Zegers raise that Stanley Cup, but we'll just have to imagine it. As after six seasons in the NHL and one in the AHL, Trevor Zegers has his first Stanley Cup ring. Trevor Zegers was not the focal point of the offense as Steele, Van Riemsdyk, and Drysdale all had more points than him, but still 19 points with 11 goals through 25 games. A very, very good postseason for Trevor Zegers, who grows to a 92 overall and definitely has a lot of incentive to re-sign now that he has a Stanley Cup ring. Look at these numbers, 99s across the boards for deking, passing, and puck control. 98 hand-eye, 93 offensive awareness, 5-star defense now, 5-star shooting. I don't know if his overall is going to get much better than this, and this is exactly why Anaheim was hoping for big things from him. He leads them to a great regular season, has a huge role in the Stanley Cup playoffs, gets a Stanley Cup ring, Drysdale as well, 1 goal, 19 assists. JVR was a great pickup. Sam Steele, great development from him. Even guys like Thomas Tatar they picked up along the way. Oliver ekman Larson's on the Stanley Cup winning team, and John Gibson was a brick wall, putting up three shutouts as well along the way. Not really a surprise as Sam Steele wins the Conn Smythe Trophy. And heading into year number eight, we'll see what happens with that contract situation as Zegras will definitely want to get paid. In the offseason, JVR goes out with a bang with that Stanley Cup ring on his finger. He had a fantastic season as well, as we saw in the points earlier. He went off. Is that a career high for JVR? In his final season in the NHL, he puts up 83 points, the best he's ever done with 43 goals. That's just wild. No better way to go out than that. Also retiring, as you can see here, is Alexander Ovechkin, who went out as the NHL's all-time leading goal scorer with 1,084 goals in 1,718 games with 1,937 points. 41 years of age, still an 88 overall. He won the last, I believe, uh, so aside from this 
this season, in years one to six of the simulation, he won the Morris Richard Trophy. So as soon as he goes down a little bit of a dip to 36, he says, nah, I don't have it anymore. Time to call it a career. But hey, hats off to Ovi nonetheless. In year number seven, Trevor Zegras is starting off at a 92 overall, best start to a season he has ever had in his overall and attributes. On his right is still Connor Garland, who is now at an 88, and on his left is Thomas Tatar, who will replace JVR and hopefully have as big of a season as JVR did. Second line is beautiful, Alex, Alex Formenton joining the team, Alex Texay joining the third line. Sam Steele on the fourth line, definitely questionable, but... I guess that'll probably change throughout the season. Now, here's the interesting part. Trevor Zegras, once again signing a bridge contract. Two years, $21.28 million for an AAV of $10.64 million per season. So, I don't know if this stems from his uh, attitude issues that had him be uh, sent down to the AHL in year number two as an 86 overall. But it's interesting to note that the Ducks are not committing to Zegras, yet they've committed to Drysdale. He had a five or six year contract at 10.37. Three more years left on that one but Zegris continually getting bridge contracts so he will once again be a UFA two seasons from now defense you saw right here Drysdale's the big selling point as it really drops off after that Ekman Larson at an 80 overall Mackenzie Weger etc goaltending Bobkov and Gibson splitting the starts 88 and 86 overall respectively could be the last season we see Gibson here if the Ducks are smart they'll hang on to Bobkov and not do what AI teams usually do which is trade their young goalies for nothing and roll with like a 70 overall backup Depth is all right. Zegris is primed and ready to explode for more career highs as he has five-star everything aside from the four-star physical. So let's rock and roll here in year number eight. Year number eight was Anaheim's best regular season yet as they finished second in the NHL and top of the Western Conference with 111 points, a record of 52, 23, and 7. Also the highest scoring team in the NHL, averaging close to four goals per night. And getting a lot of those goals was Trevor Zegras, who had a pretty almost identical season to last one. Same amount of goals, assists, points, penalty minutes, just three more plus minuses, uh, three more pluses, and uh, one more power play point. Not too different. Uh, Isaac Lundstrom actually led the way in points with 90 points, up to an 89 overall. You'd love to see that. Leonov with 79 points. Texier 68. So things really coming together for the Ducks here in Anaheim. But just to say, just another over point per game season for Trevor Zegris. In the playoffs, it was another deep run, but this time the Ducks came up short as they lost in five games to the eventual Stanley Cup champion Winnipeg Jets. The Islanders once again made it to the Stanley Cup Finals for the third straight season, but got swept out by Winnipeg after they themselves swept the second and third round. So the Ducks, they won the first round in six, they took out the Coyotes in seven, but just didn't have enough gas in the tank to take out the Jets with that five-game series loss. Trevor Zegras definitely pulled his weight though as he scored 19 points in 18 games with 6 goals and 13 assists. Heading into year number 9, he maintains that 92 overall. All the same attributes as always. Faceoffs getting a little bit better up at 87. Just as fast as the wind there with that acceleration and speed. And uh, as we said, he's going to be moving into the final year of that little 2-year bridge. So we'll hope for more good things that will make him want to stay in Anaheim. Year number nine sees Anaheim start the season with possibly their best first line yet. Trevor Zegras at a 92 overall, centering the top line with Leonov on his left and Garland on his right, both 88 overalls. So we have the 88 overall power forward with five star shooting. Trevor Zegras with his insane puck skills, shooting, passing, all that great stuff. Connor Garland with his own four star shooting as a sniper. That is going to be deadly. The second line is insane as well with Lundstrom, Texier. Great top nine. Uh, maybe the fourth line a bit weak. Josh Anderson never grew from an 80 overall because EA just did him dirty. Jamie Drysdale at a 91. Slavin's here at an 84. Tony D'Angelo at an 82 found his way back to the NHL. Pretty much an overhaul decor. I don't think there's anyone the same from last season aside from Drysdale. And then between the pipes is now Bobkov taking the reins. 84 overall. He's listed as an elite goalie with elite potential backed up by Jose Davison, a sixth round pick. So that really hurts to see John Gibson go. And he ended up leaving in free agency, I believe, as he signed a one-year $5.975 million contract with the Boston Bruins. Still an 86 overall, still very serviceable. 
insane records all-time wins leader with the anaheim ducks shutout leader all that other stuff we'll see in the record book later on back to trevor zegers now as he continues to develop very very well we'll see how he does with the 99 passing and all that good stuff with really good shooters on both of his wings as good as tatar and jvr were i'm excited to see how leonov does benefiting from trevor zegers here in year number nine the last time that he was ready to go into ufa status he won a stanley cup so let's see what happens here as he is on the brink of possible free agency once again. Year number nine and the Ducks are still as strong as ever as they finished fifth in the NHL with 104 points, a record of 47, 25, and 10, and scoring even more goals than they did when they uh, won the Western Conference, 3.94 per game, just below the Avalanche's 3.95. Trevor Zegris was an absolute animal in year number nine, in the contract season no less as he set new career highs once again in goals, assists, and points with 56 goals, 55 assists, and 111 points, blowing out his previous records. Look at this top line. Garland, 94 and 76. Leonov, 92 and 81. Trevor Zegris, not only did he score, but he put up the points as well. I know I'm spoiling it a little bit, seeing that he's at a 93 overall, but I just have to look at his numbers right here. Just unbelievably wild great great to see plus minus record as well just wonderful numbers Sla 64 points from slavin 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 and then bobkov didn't do super well so that was probably the only area that the ducks lacked in despite the insane regular season though the ducks fell in the second round in seven games to the minnesota wild who would go on to get swept in the stanley cup finals by the buffalo sabers so it was a pretty solid playoff run, but just not enough gas in the tank, and I'm assuming that the goaltending was not the strongest. And that seems to be the case, as Bobkov did well, but not, you know, not really Stanley Cup winning numbers, unfortunately. Trevor Zegras did put up 12 points in 11 games, keeping up his over point per game streak there. Four goals and eight assists, as we previously saw, up to a 93 overall. And just to say, guys like Robbie Fabry, uh, Shane Gossespierre, some names that the Ducks added along the course of the season so it's nice to see the ai gm actually trying to build a stanley cup winning team for once as that has been rare in recent uh, career sims 93 overall for zegris i don't even know what to say anymore his he somehow keeps getting faster he's just putting bionic in, in, um, implants in his legs with 94 acceleration 94 speed 93 offensive awareness the 88 poise is huge despite the playoff exit it was a huge year for hardware as well as trevor zegris won the art ross trophy the heart memorial trophy the lady bing memorial trophy and the ted lindsay award and finally the morris richard trophy five individual awards for trevor zegris comparatively to the rest of the nhl i guess he actually technically he tied with this creative prospect adam wismuller five foot nine sniper okay uh he so i'll be a tie for the art ross but he did lead goals by a couple over Caden Kovacs, another, okay, the Canadians have some great prospects. But just to say that it was, you know, he beat out some really big names to get these awards. So that is no small feat. And headed into year number 10, if we thought this man was going to get paid earlier, we were not even close because that is going to be a huge payday on July 1st. And just to note, concerning new Anaheim Duck franchise records, Trevor Zegers' 56 goals and 111 points were new franchise records, as well as Connor Garland's 71 assists. So shout out to that first line. Year number 10, and Trevor Zegers somehow still continues to grow. 93 overall, and as you can see, yes, he has re-signed with the Anaheim Ducks, and he has committed both he and the franchise to each other in a big way, as it is a seven-year, $83.79 million contract, paying him close to $12 million per season at 11.97 AAV. Leonov's grown to a 90 overall. Connor Garland, at the age of 33, is as good as I've ever seen him. The second line looks great the forward depth is a bit shaky as some names have left the ducks but texay lundstrom and of course the first line guys like we said are all still here on defense jamie drysdale at 91 jake chikrin at an 89 was a huge free agent signing i would assume slavin slavin is still here and as you know, not too bad uh i'd say the defense is the best it's been in a few seasons goaltending it is wow i did not see this coming i thought bobkov was here for sure cons and black 
those are the two goaltenders 73 and 71 i've been praising the ai but no more yikes an undrafted prospect and a sixth round pick by vegas in 2026 73 and 71 why does the computer not why does the ai not get someone better whatever trevor zegers at a 93 overall we've never seen him higher than uh, as high as this so i'm assuming that because uh, since all the stars are all still the same it's hard to tell his shooting went down a little bit but his overall went up so i'm guessing that it's due to his uh, defensive awareness up to 91 slash probably an increase in things like durability body checking but we're not going to complain coming off of those awards that he won last season he is signed to a big deal and it is time for him to pony up let's do it year number 10. Bobkov, by the way, went to the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm assuming in free agency, signing a one-year, $3 million some dollar deal. So I guess the Ducks are really pressed for cap if they weren't able to at least keep a $3 million goaltender. Also to note that as of year number 10, Trevor Zegras is the captain of the Anaheim Ducks. His alternates are Leonov and Jamie Drysdale. So pretty realistic if you ask me, and quite well-deserved. Year number 10 was another strong season for the Anaheim Ducks as they finished 12th in the NHL with 95 points and a record of 47, 34, and 1. Trevor Zegras had another 100 plus point season and a new career high in assists as he scored 35 points and 69 assists for 104 points in 80 games. The first time in a very long time that he didn't play all 82 games as he was out for a couple there. Leonov, Garland, Lundstrom, everyone pulling their weight here on Anaheim and just another really good regular season for Zegras. For anyone curious about the goal Tending situation the Ducks continued to roll with the 75 and 74 overall somehow a 75 overall goes 33 26 and 1 with atrocious numbers so that just tells you how strong the Ducks were offensively and then the backup at 74 had a 902 save percentage 2.97 better than cons but not by that much so hopefully in the offseason that'll be something that is addressed in the playoffs for the first time in a long time the Ducks did not make it out of the first round I believe they won the first two games and then they lost four straight to lose in six to the Avalanche who ended up losing in six to the Wild who lost in six to the Jets who went on to win the Stanley Cup sweeping the Pittsburgh Penguins. Despite only getting six games of action, Zegers did score seven points in those six games, negative three, four goals, three assists, and heading into year number 11, he is still at a 93 overall, 29 years of age, the C on his jersey, another 100 plus point season coming off one of those, has big money in the bank, and we'll see how he can do and what the Ducks do overall as a team heading into year number 11. Year number 11, and I am loving the Ducks' top six here. Trevor Zegras, 93 overall, with Garland on his right, Leonov on his left. The second line, Texe, Lundstrom, and Kiefer Bellows. The bottom six is where it drops off a little bit, but hopefully that can be made up for with all the, the, the firepower in the top six. Defense still, Chikrin and Drysdale in the top pair after that really drops off for the most part. And goaltending, fingers crossed, oh, it's somehow even worse than last season, as we have Daryl Black, the sixth round pick from Vegas, and Skylar Sandlack, a first round pick, okay, nice, but in 2029, he's 19 years of age and medium elite, that's cool, six foot five, all that good stuff, but he's not ready for the NHL yet, guys, come on. Uh, no one really wild in the scratches, so hey, let's see what kind of season we can have here. Not very hopeful at all. Even if the Ducks rank the playoffs, it's just without a good goalie with good poise, it's not going to go well. So Trevor Zegras, 93 overall attributes, looking as juicy as ever. 94 offensive awareness. I'm looking for another 100 plus point season from him. So let's check it out. 11 years and 11 consecutive playoff berths as year number 11 sees Anaheim finish fifth in the NHL with a record of 48, 28, and 6 to give them 102 points. It was strong in the Pacific as the Edmonton Oilers were able to win the division and the conference over Anaheim, but a very good season nonetheless. No new career highs from Trevor Zegras, but he did exactly what I asked him to do. Another 100 plus point season, 38 goals, 64 assists, 102 points. The second highest assist total and third highest point total of uh, a one regular season of his career as well. Connor Garland, another huge season who has really found his stride in his older age here with Anaheim, 87 points. Leonov, 84. Lundstrom, 65. Drysdale goes down after that. Goaltending, let's check it out. Daryl Black went 33, 22, and 5. I have four shutouts, 892 save percentage, 3.21 goals against average, still a 75 overall. 
I don't know what Anaheim is doing. Skylar Sandlack in his rookie season as a 19, 20 year old put up, went 15, 8, and 1. So you know what? That's really good for a guy who was a 60 some overall, now up to a 70 with 69 poise. Gotta respect it. The Ducks made it out of the first round this season as they took down the Sharks in seven, but ended up dropping in six to Vancouver, who lost to the St. Louis Blues, who went on to win the Stanley Cup in seven against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Zegers definitely did his part, though, in the playoffs as he scored four goals and 12 assists for 16 points through 13 games. And Daryl Black in the playoffs, six, six, and one, 893 save percentage, 3.32 goals against average. So, unfortunately, you gotta put a lot of the blame on the goaltending. Because if it weren't for the goaltending, I could definitely have seen Anaheim going for a Stanley Cup this year and last year. Heading into year number 12, he still holds on to that 93 overall. The man has been a machine when it comes to passing the puck as well with, what does he have in the last three seasons now? Like 180 assists, something like that? The last three seasons, really, really good stuff. Three season streak of 100 points or more. And as we mentioned, as always, attributes don't seem to be changing much. Offensive awareness up to 95. And he just, you know, he's starting to age like a fine wine now into his 30s. So we'll see what he does over the offseason. Season. We'll see what Anaheim does over the offseason, hopefully with the goaltending especially, and we'll check out year number 12. Year number 12 in Anaheim, the top line remains the same. Trevor Zegers at a 93 overall with Connor Garland now 35 years of age down to an 86 overall on his right. Leonov, 88 overall on his left. Lundstrom on the second line, his wingers aren't as strong this season. Kiefer Bellows down on that third line. Defense top pairing still Chikrin and Drysdale. After that, does drop off quite a bit, especially on the third pairing. Goaltending! <laughs> Skylar Sandlack, 20 years of age, 77 overall, minor starting goalie role, he is the new starting goalie on the Anaheim Ducks, uh, backed up by Griffin Sugihara, a fifth round pick of the Jets in 2028 with fringe starter potential, 69 overall, fantastic. Once again, don't know why Anaheim isn't just signing, they have depth forwards but they have no other goalies in the entire system. Uh, hopefully, what's his name? What's this? Uh, Sandlack grows nice. We have a guy like Lucas Dostal, who's supposed to be in the Ducks system. They let him go, I guess, a few years ago. Former draft pick of the Ducks. 85 overall. 85! He only wants .825 million. The poor guy just wants to play in the NHL. Go and sign an 85 overall goalie and win the Stanley Cup. Anyways, it's time for another carrying type season from Trevor Zegris. I'm not totally sold on the team this season, but with Zegris at the helm, you know that anything can happen. Attributes look the same as last season, and we're ready to hop into year number 12. Despite a reasonably good season, year number 12 sees the Anaheim Ducks miss the playoffs for the first time in the entire simulation after the 11-year streak comes to an end, finishing 21st in the NHL with a record of 41-37-4 for 86 points. You can't say that Trevor Zegras was to blame as he put up 93 points in 78 games, 37 goals, 56 assists. Leonov pulled his weight. Connor Garland, the old man, still doing his part as well. So does it come down to the goaltending? Most likely. Sandlack didn't do terribly, but didn't have good support for the in the backup, not in the slightest with Sugihara. And it would have made a lot of sense to go out and get a goaltender. So with nothing else to say in this one, aside from noting that the Pittsburgh Penguins went on to win the Stanley Cup, we can get ready to head into year number 13 as Trevor Zegers, maybe has a fire lit under him, a little bit of anger after not making the playoffs. The Ducks organization, management, need to really do something. The man is a 93 overall, 5 star everything except 4.5 star physical. I think these are the actual highest attributes we've seen from him overall. His offensive awareness has slightly gone down, but his physical is at an all-time high, so that keeps him at a 93 overall overall. Nonetheless, we'll see how this offseason goes and check back in in year number 13. Also to note that John Gibson did call it a career in the offseason at 78 overall. After leaving Anaheim, he bounced around a little bit, Boston, Dallas, and New York, putting up decent numbers, but of course a legend in Anaheim. As he currently still holds the all-time franchise record in wins and shutouts, and I do not see that changing anytime soon. Year number 13 does see some upgrades for the Anaheim Ducks as Trevor Zegras, still the same top line as always. On defense, still Drysdale Chikrin on the top pair and then it drops off after that. Better than last season, better than having 75s here on the bottom pair. Goaltending, Skylar Sandlack at the age of 21 has grown to an 82 overall. 
He's listed as a starting goalie. Anaheim is going to be very happy to have that. He's backed up by Georges Methot, a medium league goalie, undrafted. So I guess they got him in free agency. That's nice. Two-year deal for him. Hopefully that's enough to just give them what they need between the pipes and the forwards and the defense can do the rest. Trevor Zegras, 93 overall at the age of 31. He has four years left, including this one, on that big contract. Attributes looking as nice as ever. Still five-star everything except for the four-and-a-half-star physical. So expecting another great season from Zegras. Expecting to be back in the playoffs. And you know what? Maybe expecting a, a Stanley Cup run with some nice veteran Anaheim presence on this team. Year number 13 saw the Anaheim Ducks get back into the playoffs, finishing 12th in the NHL, putting up 93 points with a record of 44, 33, and 5. Trevor Zegers did what Trevor Zegers does best as he scored 100 plus points for the fourth time in the last five seasons. He scored 104 points with 46 goals and 58 assists in 50 in all 82 games. Leonov 87. This guy Barker was here. He scored 71 points. Lundstrom, Comtois, and Richie. Lundstrom, the only original, but Comtois and Richie coming back to their old team. Putting up good numbers. Garland starting to slow down. Drysdale, not the best season. Goaltending wise, Sandlack, yikes. <laughs> Decent record, but 893 save percentage, 3.23 goals against. My thought here, 879 save percentage, 3.69 goals against the average. Why go and trade for a backup, right? But nonetheless, in the playoffs, the Anaheim Ducks made a good run as they went all the way to the conference finals before they lost to the Colorado Avalanche in six, who lost to the Montreal Canadiens in seven games. Donc, les Canadiens de Montréal ont gagné la Coupe Stanley. Et félicitations à l'équipe et tous ses partisans. Very happy to see that, personally. I, especially against the, the old Nordiques. So that would be a pretty cool Stanley Cup final matchup. Ducks took down the Coyotes in seven, the Sharks in six, but then dropped in six themselves to the Avalanche, as we said. But once again, that was not because of Trevor Zegers, as he most certainly pulled his weight. 11 goals, 14 assists, and 25 points in 19 games. Leonov was there as well. This guy, Barker, I don't know where he came from. 87 overall. I'm guessing, and yeah, I guess it was a trade deadline pickup as he was a former fifth overall pick of the Vancouver Canucks a sniper so uh, on an expiring deal I really hope he sticks around as he looked to be a really big piece goaltending was not really strong in the playoffs and but three shoutouts and nine wins for Sandlack unfortunately not quite enough but I guess did what he could Trevor Zegris will head into year number 14 as still maintaining a 93 overall attributes look to be as good as ever and we'll see how he does over the offseason hopefully that shot accuracy and power can get picked up a little bit play a little ball hockey in the summer see what he can do in the 2033 offseason, it was a huge retirement class as McDavid, Dreisaitl, Eichel, Pasternak, Nylander, Barzil, all Panarin, all going out. Panarin, I guess he went downhill at the end of his career there. But look at these big names. McDavid, over 1,700 points in one in just under 1,400 games, 1,004 assists, 757 goals. Dreisaitl, over 1,500 points. Eichel, 1,430 and 1,356. Pasternak, 1,322. So just huge point total. So the NHL's me missing a lot of point scores next season as guys like mcdavid was still an 87 dry was still a 91 eichel was an 86 pass so you know it's wide open out there when it comes to the morris richard the art ross trophy and hopefully trevor zegers can get some more hardware Year number 14, and for the first time in a long time, Trevor Zegers has a new line mate, as on his right wing is Aldrich Herdina, a first-round selection in 2029 by the St. Louis Blues, two-way forward, has great puck skills aside from deking, uh, really wonky stats, like terrible shot blocking, good stick checking, 99 offensive awareness, so hopefully that'll help out. Uh, on, on his left is still Ruslan Leonov. Second line, Comtois, Lundstrom, and Gushkin, and then it really starts to drop off. Nick Ritchie's still hanging around, but aside from that, a lot of turnover. Timmins is still here as well, but a lot of turnover over the offseason. Defense, Jamie Drysdale and Jake Chikrin are still on that top pair, but as, as with the forwards, lots of turnover aside from the big names. Goaltending, please, still the same, but at least there's growth. Skylar Sandlack is up to an 84 overall in a one-year $4 million contract, so let me guess, next season they'll both be gone and we'll have a 60 overall goalie, right? Anyways, Trevor Zegras, 93 overall. The man has a 99 discipline, just the patience of the Dalai Lama. He is ready to go. Five-star everything, except for now four-and-a-half star shooting, four-and-a-half star physical, but I'm sure he'll be able to make do with what he has, and let's look for another big season. Year number 14 was another strong season from the Anaheim Ducks, as they are consistently in that 11th, 12th range in the NHL, this season finishing 11th in the entire league. They had 95 points and a record of 41, 28, and 13. 
It was definitely a slower year for Trevor Zegras, still over a point per game, but not his usual 100 plus points. 78 in 77 with 32 goals and 46 assists. Leonov, Drysdale, they pulled their weight, but goaltending, how did it go here? Sandlack, okay, looking a bit more like a starter these days, and I thought wasn't too shabby himself. But in the playoffs, the Ducks got rocked in the second round. They barely squeezed out of the first, taking out the Coyotes in seven. But then the eventual Stanley Cup champion Calgary Flames beat them in five. Zegers was consistent as he still put up 11 points in 12 games, as did Lundstrom and Leonov. Definitely hurts that the Ducks don't really have that kind of prospect depth type of thing. That guy Franzen, I don't know where he went after winning the Calder. The guy they got at the trade deadline from Vancouver, I guess he went to free agency. It's just been tough without the depth scoring after the big guys. And moving into year number 15, Trevor Zegers drops slightly now to a 92 overall. Uh, physical, I guess that's where it is. It's now down to four stars. His discipline down from 99 to 95. He must have been furious in the playoffs. But aside from that, all the other attributes are still nice and high. So we'll see what we're looking like in year number 15. Also to note that after these 14 seasons, Trevor Zegras is closing in on Timo Solani for the all-time franchise record in goals. So that'll be something that we keep note of. More big names going out over the offseason as players like Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner both calling it a career. Matthews 1,468 points and 762 goals playing his entire career with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mitch Marner, however, went over to the Chicago Blackhawks and he retired with 1,452 points same year as Alex Debrink hit both on the Blackhawks. So that's a big hit to them. Unfortunately, I wanted to come look at where that put Austin Matthews all time in goals, but the record book is pretty broken because number one should be Alex Ovechkin who scored 1,084 goals. Austin Matthews had said he scored 700 something now it's showing him as 801 meanwhile we have Henrik Lundqvist here who played 1800 games so unfortunately when it comes to career NHL records we won't be able to be really looking at those Year number 15 and Trevor Zegras still has a lot of gas left in the tank, 92 overall at the age of 33. Still playing on that top line with Leonov who has dropped to an 86 and Aldrich Herdina at an 84. Aside from that, the team's starting to drop off a little here. They haven't really had, I don't believe, any top 10 picks in the entire duration of this franchise mode. They had a few top picks like there's this guy Jonas Jonas who was an 11th overall pick. Uh, that guy uh, Franzen who won the Calder, who knows whatever happened to him, uh, you know, Comtois, Richie, the depth that used to be here, Sam Steele used to be an 83 overall on the fourth line, just not happening anymore. Isaac Lundstrom at the age of 34 has dropped to an 83. But thankfully, the drafting has been decent. Like this guy, Par Pedersen, medium elite, he was a fourth round pick in 2029, and that'll have to keep the Ducks afloat as they try to stay in the elite category, led by Trevor Zegras. Drysdale leading them on defense at a 91 overall as well, paired with Jacob Chikrin, who is 36 years of age and at an 81, and defense not really much to write home about after that. Goaltending though, everybody stand up and put your hands together for 89 overall, Skylar Sandlack, 23 years of age, 89 overall. He signed to a two year, $20 million contract, AAV of 10.07. Please Anaheim, sign this guy up long term soon and make him just a franchise pillar. Do not let him go and then turn to a 70 overall Kovanov here. So hopefully that goes well with a new starting goaltender and Trevor Zegras can pull whatever weight he has to. 93 offensive awareness, the overall is still there. Attributes are pretty much the same as before. So without further ado, we'll hop into year number 15, a season in which Trevor Zegras will be trying to pass the all-time goals record on the Anaheim Ducks, taking it away from Timu Solani. Also to note that last season he did pass the thousand point plateau as he is over a point per game in his career now. And we'll see what he can do in his 15th season. Technically, kind of his 14th full NHL season, but I'm counting those four games in the NHL and then getting sent down to the AHL as one season as well. So year number 15, let's hit it. A bit surprisingly, year number 15 was Anaheim's worst season yet in the simulation as they finished 24th in the NHL. 82 points in 82 games with a record of 38, 38, and 6. Trevor Zegers had another great season as he went over a point per game playing in all 82, 42 goals and 48 assists for 90 points. Though he was a negative 9 and it seems as though depth was an issue, a lot of negatives on the team here. I saw a negative 19, a negative 13, a negative, 15, a negative 22. So depth definitely came back to bite Anaheim a little bit here. Despite great seasons, like I said, from Zegers as well as Leonov, Herdina, Drysdale, even Lundstrom at the age of 35. Goaltending, the 89 overall Sandlack 
black went 23 15 and 3 for some reason they played Kovanov way too much i don't think it was due to injury because then i'd be seeing another goalie here but perhaps they got he got sent down and they're not showing it to me but I, I would assume that Sandlack would have had to have been injured for Kovanov to play so much. And that's, there you go. That's why depth is important. If your backup is 62 overall, when your main starter goes down, your elite starter, then it's not going to go well. 15, 19, and 1, 869 save percentage, 4.07 goals against average. So in 2035, the Sabres went on to win the Stanley Cup, if you are curious. And heading into year number 16, Zegris maintaining 92 overall at the moment. Still has elite potential. We'll see what happens. He will be heading into the final year of his big contract that he signed, the seven-year deal. And attributes are looking as good as ever. The puck skills are still very, very good. Speed has dropped a little bit. Acceleration from, I think his highest was 94. Now we're at 92. Still extremely fast and still extremely reliable. So nothing really to worry about heading into next season. And after 1,138 games played, probably a little less than that, Trevor Zegers now holds the all-time Anaheim Ducks franchise goal record, currently sitting at 481, passing Timu Solani. And in the 2035 season, Trevor Zegers set a new single-game record of points as he scored seven points in one game. Year number 16 at the age of 34 and Trevor Zegras is still hanging on to his 92 overall at exact elite potential. He is looking as good as ever. He has a new left winger, Jermaine Lees, a sniper with five-star shooting. This could be huge. On his right, it's still Aldrich Herdina, but no longer Leonov on his left side. That's a big change for him. Lundstrom has bounced back to an 85 overall. Jonas has grown to an 81 aside from that Pedersen grown to an 82 much better depth not elite depth but much better depth in the bottom six for Anaheim and hopefully Zegras and Lees will be able to link up here he was a first overall selection 10 years ago in 2025 so we'll see what comes from that defense Drysdale still uh, still up there 89 overall now dropped a little bit third pair leaves a lot to be desired goaltending now Sandlack is at an 89 overall hopefully he can play a nice full healthy season we still don't know what happened last year last year that two-year 20 million dollar contract please Anaheim please resign him Kavanov yay he's grown to a 66 still not an NHL backup don't know what Anaheim's doing anyways Trevor Zegris attributes looking great offensive awareness at 93 discipline bounced up from 95 to 97 Lee's gave him a little talk and said listen old man you gotta have so you gotta be a bit cooler out there Leonov the power forward was making him go a little crazy at 95 discipline but now he's back so without further ado year number 16 ready to go Zegras seems to always perform super well in a contract season so hopefully this will be one of those and if Anaheim knows what they're doing, they will re-sign him ASAP. Only two of the last 15 seasons have resulted in missing the playoffs and last season being one of them. So hopefully Zegras will help them get back into the playoff picture and we'll see what year number 16 has to offer. Year number 16 was a strong bounce back season from the Ducks as they finished fourth in the NHL, once again, unfortunately, behind very strong Western Conference teams. Nonetheless, 100 points and a record of 47, 29, and 6. Trevor Zegras, still sitting atop the throne in Anaheim, scored 86 points in 82 games, 34 goals, and 52 assists. Was a negative 5, which is a bit weird, and took 28 penalty minutes. Easily a career high for him, and more than multiple seasons combined. He's more of a Lady Bing kind of guy. He's been getting a bit more vicious in his older age, as he was used to being in the single digits even. It's 28 penalty minutes from him. Very important to note here, Tyler Jonas. Jonas, 50 goals in 77 games, grown to an 85 overall, 78 points. Really looking forward to big things from him. Lees had 62 points, and Herdina, 66 on Zegers' wings. Sandlack finally had the net to himself, going 41, 21, and 4 with 5 shutouts. Pretty good numbers. Kavanov, I don't know what this guy is doing. Get the GM of Anaheim out of here. For over four goals per game that he lets in in 16 appearances. Same old story for the Ducks as they made it to the second round in the playoffs, but then lost to the eventual Stanley Cup champion, this time it being the Vancouver Canucks. It's pretty common that the first round is a seven-game win, and then the second round is a loss, usually to a team that makes it at least to the Cup Finals. So Vancouver beat out Tampa Bay in six. 
In those 13 games, Trevor Zegras put up 5 goals and 10 assists for 15 points. No penalty minutes. He was a good boy. And heading into year number 17, he does drop slightly to an 89 overall at the age of 35. So now at the end of that massive seven-year contract that he signed so many years ago, the question will now be, is Trevor Zegers committed to the Anaheim Ducks towards the end of his career right now? Are the Ducks committed to him or do they want to use that money elsewhere? The puck skills and the senses are all there, but the defense starting to drop off. Same with the skating, the physical already down to three stars. So we'll see what this offseason has to offer. Hopefully he's going to be working really hard with Gary Roberts at his retirement home. And we'll check out the roster for year number 17. And just to note that it seems as though the reason why Trevor Zegras is not winning any big awards is that there are just way too many overpowered generated players here. 96 overall at the age of 21, sniper. Okay, buddy. So scoring is on medium, prospect generation is on medium, draft class is on medium, all that stuff, totally untouched. But there, look at all these created players up here. Even only Tim Stutzla is the only real guy putting up 96 points. Anton Lundell. So it takes a, quite a little bit of scrolling to get to Trevor Zegras, even when he has a good 86-point season. Obviously not his best of his seasons, but just to note that the reason the hardware hasn't been coming, despite him playing very well, is due to the generated prospects. Huge names retiring in the offseason as well as Nikita Kucherov goes out with 2,034 points and 974 goals in just under 1,800 games. Also in just under 1,800 games was Nate McKinnon with 1,973 points. And then the names go on after that. Now this is interesting heading into year number 17. Trevor Zegras is now the second line center on Anaheim as they brought in a couple of big names. Brad Lambert, 91 overall playmaking center to a three year contract with an AAV of 16.325 million. Add on Grigory Denisenko, a 15th overall pick from the Florida Panthers who signed a one year contract at $7.54 million, also a playmaker. Look at those puck skills great shooting pair them with tyler jonas jonas with 99s across the board in the shooting that's a deadly first line and zegris you know at the age of 35 now i don't think he minds being on the second line with vasily ponomarev and aldrich herdina his good friend defense it did come at a cost as jamie drysdale is no longer on the anaheim ducks well look where he went in just a moment that's gonna be a huge hit for everyone as the bottom four is between 71 and 80 overall and the top pair is 82 83 so that's really going to be tough drew lee here 71 overall goaltending thank goodness they did get skylar sandlack re-signed but only to a one-year contract worth 10.07 million kavanaugh backing up at 71 and sorry i forgot to mention speaking of contracts of course trevor zegris did re-sign it was a one-year deal at 9.84 million he's ready to sign on for one more season not committing long term to the end of his career but one year at 9.84 and we'll see what comes from it here in year number 17. Also to note, heading into year number 17, that Trevor Zegras has passed Ryan Getzlaff on the all-time points record for the Anaheim Ducks franchise, currently sitting at 1,224. His goals record of 515 also continues to grow. Despite the increased firepower, I believe this was the worst record we've seen from the Anaheim Ducks so far in the franchise mode. 25th place in the NHL. Not worst placement, but worst record. 73 points and a record of 32, 41, and 9. It seems as though the scoring just really drops off after the big maybe 3, 4, 5 names. Uh, Trevor Zegras scored 77 points and was a negative 11. 28 goals and 49 assists playing in all 82 games. Close to a point per game. Jonas did amazing with 59 goals and 96 points. Then Senko, Lambert, they lived up to the hype. But it just really fell off after Goal that. Goaltending, uh, Sandlack went 27, 21, and 7. And of course, rolling with Kavanov for 29 games, who went 5, 19, and 2, 871 save percentage, 4.22 goals against. I don't even know what to say anymore. This team could be so good. It could have been so good. It could future be so good. But it's just, they're handcuffing themselves with guys like Kavanov as the backup and playing him so much. Uh, whether it's injury related or not 
Anyways, heading into year number 18, Trevor Zegras has dropped to exact top six potential and is listed as a second line forward as his overall is now 85. Won't look at his attributes too much as it won't mean a lot as there's still a lot that could change until the start of next season. But just to say a huge drop in the acceleration and speed as he's now at three star skating despite, despite you know, puck skills, shooting senses still being up there. That's a big hit. And if this wasn't already enough of a joke of a franchise, with the ninth overall pick, the Ducks took a high top nine sniper when there were still medium top four and elite D and just regular top six forwards available as well. Just yikes, management had, look at all these top four and top six D and elite potential prospects. And you go and take the high top nine. Yeah, no one to blame but themselves. Year number 18 and the Anaheim Ducks and Trevor Zegers came to an agreement to sign a two-year contract worth $20.3 million, 10.15 AAV. At 36 years of age and 85 overall, maybe that'll bring him to retirement, not quite sure. Uh, this is probably the worst forward core that we've seen from Anaheim so far. Brad Lambert and Jonas are up there on the first line, which is very nice. Uh, Yahir Welch. A sniper, okay, interesting, on the left wing. Zegers' new wingers are Petri, Petri, Petri Ramo, a 30th overall selection in 2026. Sniper, okay, at least he's Anaheim born and raised there. And Alan Rogers, also a first round pick in 20, okay, all right, at least this is a, a fully drafted second line. Aside from that, it goes down. Third line's okay, fourth line is terrible, like shamefully garbage, I'd say, like, that's AHL third, fourth line material. Defense, at least they did spend some money. Devin Turnbull, a two-way D, signed him for a couple of years. Zachary Conan signed him, all right. Goaltending, Sandlack is gone. Why would we want to keep him? Jamal Jocelyn is here now. A second round pick in 2028. He's 84 overall, signed for one year at 4.36 million. Okay, that's great. Backed up by none other than our favorite backup, Vyakslav Kavanov. 76 overall with elite potential. And why is he still here? Depth is atrocious, and we're ready to rock and roll here in year number 18. Trevor Zegras, 85 overall, top six potential, skating at two and a half stars. Wow, and two and a half star physical. That's really rough. Puck skills at five stars, as are senses, shooting and defense both at four stars. Uh, yeah, shot blocking, stick checking are in the pits. It's just his defensive awareness and face-off ability. Still has great offensive awareness. He has the shooting accuracy. The puck skills are still elite. So we'll see what Zegers and the Ducks can do in year number 18. Also, just super funny to note that the Ducks have $19.69 million in cap space. They could go out and get great forwards. They could get great defense. They could have signed whoever they wanted in free agency. They could have kept Skylar Sandlack but decided not to, whatever. Speaking of Skylar Sandlack, he ended up signing with the reigning Stanley Cup champion Florida Panthers, who gave him seven years at just about 10 million per season. The Ducks could have easily matched that and given him much more. He was their first round pick in 2029. I do not know why they let him go. Maybe he just really wanted out. But with all that money, I'm very disappointed that Anaheim did not keep him. And are unfortunately perpetuating the carousel of goalies since the departure of John Gibson. It's not like there's anyone in free agency who we could sign on two-way deals for under a million who could play on the fourth line instead of having 72 overalls, right? Who would want a 78, a 79, an 81? Who would want players like that? Why would we do that? We gotta keep our 20 million in cap space. Year number 18 was extremely strong as the Anaheim Ducks won the Western Conference and of course the Pacific Division, finishing third in the entire NHL with 110 points, a record of 52, 24, and 6. Despite a slightly reduced role, Trevor Zegras was still on that about point per game pace, going 76 in 77, 30 goals and 46 assists from him. But check out Tyler Jonas. We still don't know if it's Jonas or Jonas. He, okay, you know, it's probably Jonas actually, if he's from Norway. He had 121 points. 72 goals in 82 games. That is just ludicrous. 70 hand eye and 70 deking, but 90 passing. All right, but 99s across the board. Really wild prospect. Five foot nine. Okay. 
Uh, Brad Lambert was uh, able to dish him the puck many, many times with 85 assists. Goaltending, uh, Jocelyn. Wow, great season from Jocelyn. Finally, Kavanov is put on the bench where he belongs, and he still lets in 5.11 goals against average in the three appearances. 48, 19, and 6 with five shutouts was Jocelyn. Was Jocelyn. 914 save percentage, 2.62 goals against average, and up to an 86 overall. However, despite sweeping the Sharks in the first round, the Ducks fell in seven games as usual in the second round to the Arizona Coyotes, who lost to the Jets in five, who got swept by Skylar Sandlack and the Florida Panthers in the Stanley Cup Finals, and that is back-to-back -back cups for Florida. Trevor Zegras did go off in the playoffs, though, scoring 24 points in 11 games. How do you like that? Seven goals and 17 assists. Sheesh. Wow, that's more than two points per game. Either way, grows to an 88 overall with that fantastic performance in the regular season and postseason. Back to being listed as a first-line forward. 37 years of age. The man got a little jump in his step. The acceleration is still in that 80 to 81 area. Physical back up to three stars. Shooting back up to five stars. Offensive awareness to 95. We'll see how he holds up over the offseason and defense as well. Look at that. 80-84 shot blocking, stick checking. And we'll check back in for your number 19. But first, we'll check out the awards for anything that the Ducks may have won after that crazy season. Jonas did win the Lady Bing Memorial Trophy, but how crazy of a league do we have to be in that he can't even get the Hart, Art, Ross, Morris, Richard, Ted Lindsay? Nothing. Jocelyn did win the Vezina and the Jennings, which is the first time a Ducks goalie has won anything since John Gibson close to the beginning of the franchise mode. And Jonas's 121 points weren't as good as the 126, nor were his 72 goals as good as Gabriel Guillas, Guillas, however you want to pronounce that, from France. Gabriel Guillas. That's how you'd pronounce it if he's from France. 20th overall pick power forward. Scores 78 goals in 82 games. That's super realistic. Great job, EA, on your created prospects. Always being very broken. But thankfully, Jonas is locked up long term. So we'll see what happens heading into year number 19 and how the Ducks can continue to shape this team. Also to make note of, after year number 18, Trevor Zegras now holds the franchise record in Anaheim for most games played, currently sitting at 1,344. And next season, which will be his 19th, barring any crazy movement, he will pass Ryan Getzlaff for that as well. Soon to pass Ryan Getzlaff on the assist list as well. Year number 19 could be a big one for Trevor Zegras as he is getting closer to retirement. Oh, and of course, after that huge season from Tyler Jonas, Trevor Zegras' uh, single season records were broken for most goals and points. Brad Lambert now holding the record for assists, and Jocelyn the record for wins. And a lot of big names retiring in the retirement class of 2038. Just to note, Jamie Drysdale did end up going out with the Dallas Stars. He had 999 points, one shy of 1,000 after 1,345 games. Still a solid overall. And he had a great career over in Anaheim. Year number 19 here in Anaheim, Trevor Zegras still at an 86 overall. He has dropped to top 9 potential, which means that there is a high likelihood that he will drop in overall. Although he is playing on a big, big line with Lambert and Jonas, he could have an explosive season with that 96. Five passing now, although it's gone down. Still five-star puck skills, senses, shooting. It's just the physical and skating that has really taken a hit. I'm surprised he's on the wing with 87 face-offs, but that's all right. Uh, aside from that, the entire top nine looks pretty overhauled to me. I don't think I recognize any of these guys. Fourth line, once again, extremely questionable and suspect. I don't know why they're not signing randos in free agency. Defense, uh, the first pair is good. Oh my goodness, 66 and 67. Oh, yeah, yeah, on that bottom pair. That's not going to go well. Goaltending, it's... <laughs> what a way to go out. If this is the last season, I'm so glad that Vyacheslav Kavanov is starting. 81 overall. Why do we need Jocelyn, who just won the Vezina and the Jennings, right? Let him go, and let's have Kavanov play. Yeah, that's a great idea. Backed up by Matthew Welch. Scratched, we have some randos, and hey, let's go ahead and have some fun. It's the final year of Zegras' two-year contract that he signed, well, la uh, the season before last. And we're, you know, 37 years of age, we're getting into retirement territory. So this may very well be the last season that we have from Zegras. Year number 19, let's hit it. Year number 19 was a strong one as the Anaheim Ducks finished 7th in the NHL with 103 points, a record of 49, 28, and 5. 
Trevor Zegers definitely benefited playing on that top line. He had 36 goals and 60 assists for 96 points in 82 games, the highest that he's gotten in a while. That tied him with Connor, but 103 points for Lambert and 61 goals and 105 points for Jonas. That top line must have just been tearing up teams night in and night out. Goaltending Kavanov, let's see it. <laughs> 34, 27, and 4, an 893 save percentage and a 3.36 goals against average. Hey, G. Uh, we need to have a new goalie. Who should we play? Huh? What do you think about the guy who has a career sub 900 save percentage and uh, before this season above four goals against average? I love it. Slap him between the pipes. Nice. In the playoffs, name a better duo than the Anaheim Ducks and second round game seven exits. I will wait. And uh, accompanied by first round sweeps. So they swept the Canucks in round one, lost in seven in round two the, to the Coyotes who went on to the Stanley Cup Finals and lost against the Red Wings in six. Coyotes and Red Wings in the Stanley Cup Finals, who would have thought it only took until the year 2039? In the playoffs, Zegers was above a point per game as he scored seven goals and five assists for 12 points through those 11 games. And he still maintains his overall attributes quite well. 87 overall, despite the top nine potential, the great uh, presence of those other players on that top line kept him afloat. At the age of 38, attributes are looking like this. I would not be super surprised if he retired, but he has such a high overall. He has more to give on an expiring deal, so the Ducks will have to pay up. And we'll see what happens heading into the possibility of year number 20. In year number 20, after 19 seasons with the Anaheim Ducks, Trevor Zegers goes the way of Jamie Drysdale back in the day and signs a one-year contract with the Dallas Stars. He's an 87 overall. For some reason, they have him playing as fourth-line center. Hopefully, that'll get straightened out throughout the season. Uh, the team as a whole is not great. They have some a good, really good first line. Second line, yikes. Third line, I'm going to throw up fourth line. I don't know what's going on with Zegris and Bukaboom there. Defense, 81, 82, 79, 80, and 79, 74. It leaves a lot to be desired. And check this out. Between the pipes, hey, we got a 68 overall backed up by a 61 overall, both 20 and 19 years of age. And, and they look all scratched. This, okay, this, you know what, this makes sense. They have an injury, so the defense would be slightly better. Then in Senko, 76 overalls, costing 5.8 million as a healthy scratch. And then look at this. It's Ruslan Leon Leonov. Our old friend Ruslan Leonov. What is he doing as a healthy scratch? So it makes sense. Denisenko, Leonov, uh, Zegras, all former Anaheim Ducks coming to the Dallas Stars here. But I don't know what is going on with this team. Hopefully it sorts itself out throughout the season. Because this could be a decent team if they played people in the right position. But anyways, Trevor Zegras, 87 overall. He has bottom six potential. So he's definitely going to be dropping in overall. His puck skills are still there. His senses, his defense, all fantastic. Physical down to two stars. Skating two and a half. So one year, 8.415 million is the contract. What will happen with this team? Your guess is as good as mine. Let's check out year number 20. After we check out the record book quickly, make note that Trevor Zegras was the all-time Ducks franchise leader in points, seasons, assists, games played, and goals at the time of his departure. We'll recap all of that once he has retired, but that's not time yet. Year number 20 in Dallas. Here we go. At the 2039 trade deadline, Trevor Zegras is on the block, so I'm assuming that things are not going super well over in Dallas. The Hurricanes, Panthers, and Caps are all interested, so I really hope that he goes to a team that's going to make a run at the Stanley Cup, as, you know, he doesn't have a lot of trade value, wouldn't take a lot to get him, so hopefully someone makes a deal happen. And thank goodness the heavens have opened, the clouds have parted, and Trevor Zegras has been traded at the deadline. Usually the guys at the deadline who are available that we're watching don't go, but he has been traded to the Carolina Hurricanes with a third round pick for a prospect, prospect Ahmad Cook, and a fourth round pick. I don't know how bad Dallas were, I don't want to know, 
But now, let's go check out the Carolina Hurricanes roster. It's quite the rags to riches story as the Stars were 27, 34, and 4 through 65 games. And Trevor Zegers now finds himself on the 39, 21, and 3 Carolina Hurricanes. They're the best team in the Eastern Conference, the second best team in the NHL. And they are serious and you know what? For once, very smart from the AI to go after a guy like Trevor Zegers. Through 65 games with Dallas, Zegers put up 21 goals and 36 assists for 57 points. Very nice. I'm assuming they finally took him off that fourth line, and the Hurricanes are in for a treat. And look at this. Giving the man some respect, finally. Trevor Zegers is playing first-line center with Victor Fratton, a 92 overall playmaker with five-star shooting, and Stéphane Derouchy, an 84, 84 overall playmaker as well. So it's all playmakers on this line, but the, the shooting is definitely there. Uh, Derek Lau, 90 overall offensive defenseman. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And between the pipes, it is Len Reeves, backed up by our old friend Georges Meta. So I like this team. Uh, there's some act even some injuries. So they have good depth, great lineup. Let's see some big things from Carolina to finish off our 20th season. This just gives my heart joy. In year number 20, the Carolina Hurricanes finished second best in the NHL, top of their division, top of the Eastern Conference, 104 points with a record of 50, 28, and 4. Trevor Zegers ended up playing 85 games on the season. That's quite a season, scoring 81 points in those 85 games. With the Carolina Hurricanes on that top line center position, he ended up scoring 24 points in 20 games. Look at that. Seven goals, 17 assists. That's wonderful. Coming in cold at the trade deadline, going over a point per game on the top line of a conference winning team. That is just huge. And that speaks to how much of a professional, how much of a, uh, an elite player Trevor Zegers is. So 81 and 85 for him. The rest of the team really came together as well. Offensive defenseman scored 92 points there. Fratton, 89 points. Stahlberg, 53 goals. And between the pipes, Reeves had pretty decent numbers. Decent enough for top in the Eastern Conference. So we're not going to really complain, right? In the year number 20 playoffs, though, it was a real tough heartbreak. I was watching this one go game by game. The Hurricanes came back in the first round to take down the Flyers in seven games. Took out the Islanders in six, but then lost lost in a Game 7 thriller to the very strong Florida Panthers. It was Zegers up against his old friend Skylar Sandlack, and the Panthers came out on top, but then lost in 7 to the Calgary Flames. Who had quite the tough road to the Stanley Cup themselves, winning every series in 7 games along the way. But Trevor Zegers was the focal point of the Hurricanes offense in the playoffs, as he scored 22 points in 20 games, now at the age of 39. Hang on to an 84 overall, exact bottom six potential. The puck skills, the senses, the shooting, it's all still up there. But the skating and the physical are really going down the tubes now at two stars. I would not be surprised if Zegers retires after this season, after 20 years in the NHL. He has, well, he's on the expiring contract, drafted all the way back in 2019. Into the 2040 offseason, will he be calling it a career? And in the 2040 offseason, honestly, to my surprise, Trevor Zegers does not call it a career, despite Kako, Brad Lambert, Lafreniere, Shane Wright, all these guys retiring, Trevor Zegers is not done yet. In year number 21, Trevor Zegers wants one last dance, signing a one-year $7.075 .07 million contract with the Calgary Flames. The Flames have been very successful throughout this franchise mode, so if you can't beat them, join them. Gotta respect it. First line is monstrous. They have a power forward, playmaker, sniper combo. Pierce Hall, 93 overall, first overall pick playmaker. Tobias Ab, another first overall pick with five-star shooting, a sniper. And then Sutton is a 17th overall pick but with four-star shooting himself. That's a that's just an insane first line. Second line, Stephen Connor is here, who you may remember from the 2038-39 season with Anaheim. He had a really good campaign. So putting him as a sniper with five-star shooting on Zegers' wing, that could be deadly. Paired with Dale Kreider, another playmaker on the right side with crazy five-star puck skills. The depth is not bad at all. Very nice, actually. 83 overall on the fourth line. You know what? I like it. That's good depth. Defense leaves some, you know, leaves you wanting a little bit more, but hopefully the scoring will be enough in that top six, a really crazy top six. 
And between the pipes, it is Gordon Fotinos, 83 overall, elite potential, third round pick in 2036. And Trevor Zegras here in the 2040-41 season, 39 years of age, going on 40, listed as a third line scorer, bottom six potential, but hey, five star puck skills, 93 offensive awareness, four and a half star shooting, put those bellows on his left and his right side, despite the two star, star skating, he'll give them the puck, they'll do the rest. This can still be something really nice. One last shot at another Stanley Cup. Woo, year number 21 was a bit of a scary one as at the trade deadline, the Flames pretty much were selling everyone on their team, but they didn't make any trades and they went on a tear for the second half of the season. They ended up finishing 12th in the NHL with 96 points, a record of 45, 31, and 6. Trevor Zegras, man, I don't know how he does it, but he somehow goes above a point per game again. 82 points in 77 games. The man is 40 years old. I don't know what kind of records he's breaking. I'll put it on the screen if he's breaking any records about oldest player to do stuff. Maybe there's no records broken. There's nothing on the screen right now, but that's just ludicrous in my mind. I don't know how he's doing it and I love it. Now in the playoffs, if you thought you had a broken heart before, get ready to break it again and then put it under like a, a meat tenderizer because the Flames swept the Flames, took out the Stars in six, were up 3-1 over the Vegas Golden Knights, but then lost in seven, and Vegas would go on to sweep the Sabres to win the Stanley Cup. That close to another Stanley Cup, Trevor Zegers, his career has been riddled with second and third round exits, and you just really, really hate to see it. In the playoffs, Zegras pulled his weight with 14 points in 17 games, 6 goals, 8 assists, with a negative 4. The top guys were just insane though. Hall, 30 points. Ab with 24. Man, Trevor Zegras. At the age of 40, he's still an 83 overall, still bottom 6 potential. The puck skills, the senses, the shooting are all still there. He's as disciplined as ever. This guy's like a wise sensei. His skating and physical are both at one and a half stars. I don't know if it can get much slower than 72 acceleration and 73 speed, but he's just hands of silk. You try to come close to him, just goes right around you. Where'd it go? Oh, I'm right over here. Couldn't take off because I don't have any, any legs. No gas in the tank, but I can still keep doing circles around you. Anyways, after 21 seasons, that may be it for Trevor Zegras. I don't know. I wouldn't put it past him to get one more season in. Usually 40 years of age is a time that you don't see players go past. But hey, we'll see what happens in the offseason and if he's ready to call it a career. And in the 2041 offseason, they tried to come to Trevor Zegras' door, but he said emphatically, I'm not leaving. Season number 22. Let's see where Zegras goes now. For his 22nd NHL season, Trevor Zegras is going back to the Pacific Division as he signs with California rivals of the Anaheim Ducks, the San Jose Sharks. At an 83 overall, he is centering the top line. He has Johnny Scuderi on his left wing, an 80 overall playmaker, and Joseph Berard on his right wing, an 86 overall sniper with five-star shooting. Uh, no one we really know on the team here. Devo Ship played a season on Carolina. Uh, aside from that, not a, no really big stars, but great depth through and through. Defense here is quite solid. Charlie Myers, 91 overall, two-way D. Zachary Conan's here. He's been on, uh, he played a few seasons with Anaheim as we saw in the past. Second and third pairs are decent. Goaltending, yeah, Mathieu Menard, 22-year-old, medium backup, 74 overall, sixth round pick in 2037. That's going to definitely be questionable. Backed up by Corbin Bachman, an AHL star potential guy that just sounds like trouble to me i don't see big things from san jose hopefully zegers can be maybe moved at the deadline he did sign a one year 6.91 million dollar deal still with those five star puck skills senses and shooting the shooting has gotten better defense still four four stars because of the 94 defensive awareness but the skating and the physical both one and a half stars Man, just don't touch him or else his bones will turn to dust. Aside from that, he has hands of a magician and he knows how to place a puck. And, you know, he's just as always as disciplined as a sensei. So for his 22nd NHL season, we'll see if anything's happening around the deadline or not. But if nothing, then we will see at the end of the season with the team standings. Year number 22 was not super great here for Trevor Zegras as the San Jose Sharks did not trade him or anyone for that matter. 
and they finished 24th in the NHL with a record of 35, 38, and 9, getting 79 points. If you're curious, the Dallas Stars, the Anaheim Ducks, and the Calgary Flames all did not make the playoffs. The only team that did was the Carolina Hurricanes in, in terms of Trevor Zegers' old teams. And that didn't mean too much as in the playoffs, the Hurricanes dropped in five games in round number one to the Detroit Red Wings. Trevor Zegers did run into some injury problems at the age of 41, but nonetheless, he was on a close to point per game pace. 49 points, 24 goals, 25 assists through 55 games. The man is still an animal at the age of 41. He's dropped to an 80 overall with AHL potential, listed as a third line forward, but five-star puck skills and senses, shooting accuracy is as high as ever, but the power is going down. That puts it at four and a half stars. Skating and physical, both at one and a half. Defense at four stars. Uh, like always, an expiring deal after that one-year contract. Will he be returning for a 23rd NHL season, or is this the last that we have seen of Trevor Zegras? And after 22 NHL seasons, Trevor Zegras decides to finally call it a career at the age of 41. What a career. I was not expecting this kind of career from Trevor Zegras, and he just popped off big time. To see a regular prospect, not a created prospect, have a career like this, pretty unheard of. 1,643 games played, 697 goals, 988 assists for 1,685 points. So I'm going to run through where that would put Trevor Zegers on the all-time list here as of 2021. Obviously, a lot of these rankings would be changed with created prospects, guys like McDavid, Dreisaitl, Matthews having their entire careers under their belts. And unfortunately, since the record book is broken, we have to look at it this way. So take it with a grain of salt, but just to say that as of today's NHL, 1,643 games played would put him ninth all-time, right ahead of Dave Anderchuk's 1,639, and currently behind Joe Thornton's 1,645, but likely once he plays more, it would be behind Chris Chelios's 1,651. 697 goals would also put him ninth on the all-time list, right ahead of Marc Messier's 694, and behind Mike Gartner's 708. 988 assists would put him 14th all-time, ahead of Doug Gilmore's 964, and behind Joe Sackick's 1016. And 1,685 points would put him ninth on the all-time points list, ahead of Joe Sackick's 1,641, but behind Mario Lemieux's 1,723. It doesn't get much more consistent than Zegris as ever since probably around year number two or three, up until year number 22, he was around that point per game mark. He scored 1.0255 around that points per game. So really just crazy to see that consistency through and through, especially turning on the Jets in his final few seasons here after he was starting to slow down after his years in Anaheim. His best season of goals was 56 in the 2028-29 season. His best season of assists was 69 in the 2029-30 season. And then his best season of points, if it could sort right, was 2028-29 as he put up 111. Also his best plus minus years, he had a plus 45. Uh, his biggest penalty minute season was a 28 penalty minute season, but he was known to get in the single digits here as he was a very disciplined man. A little bit of AHL action, but mostly in the NHL, aside from that little year number two hiccup. Ends his career as a plus 188, 234 penalty minutes, just 95 shots shy of 5,000, shooting at 14.2%, 80 game winning goals, 461 power play points, some shorthanded points, still averaging big numbers at the end of his career, over 20 minutes per night, 33,000 minutes played. He was 54% on faceoffs as he took over 43,000 of them, 988 hits, 282 blocks, 929 giveaways, but almost 2,000 takeaways. Wonderful ratio right there. When it came to playoff action, he was just as consistent as he scored 235 points in 224 playoff games, 
95 goals, 140 assists, very disciplined with only 44 penalty minutes, 62 power play points. He was someone you could always count on. Those 235 playoff points would put him third all-time in the NHL, ahead of Yari Curry's 233 and behind Marc Messier's 295. His 95 goals would put him fifth all-time, just ahead of Glenn Anderson's 93 and behind Brett Hall's 103. And his 140 assists would once again put him in third behind Marc Messier, who had 186, and just ahead of Ray Bork, who had 139. And you know what? Even looking at games played, that would put him 10th all-time ahead of Chris Draper's 222 and right behind Glenn Anderson's 225 with those 224 that he had under his belt. And upon his retirement, Trevor Zegers decided to stay in the NHL and become a scout. He is a pro scout for the NHL. Currently a B overall, so he will likely grow. So as previously mentioned, looking one last time at the all-time Anaheim Ducks records here, Trevor Zegers holds the franchise record for games played at 1,426, scoring 1,473 points, another franchise record. Most season played with 19, most goals with 609, and most assists with 864. Corey Perry still leading the penalty minutes, and John Gibson still has the goaltending records. No more season records held by Trevor Zegras, nor any rookie records, but he still does have that single game points record with 7 points in 2035. So that is the career of Trevor Zegras, my friends. 22 seasons, a lot longer than I thought he was going to go, and a lot more consistent and deadly points-wise than I thought he would be late into his career. So the longer the season, the longer it takes to record and edit. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, tell me what you enjoyed, what you thought was crazy cool or crazy just crazy EA down in the comments. Consider subscribing as well. We just passed 2,000 subscribers recently here on the channel. Do a lot of franchise mode in NHL, M. MLB, Twitch streams of different franchise mode challenges, be a pro, career simulations, all that great stuff. Also, let me know whose career would you like to see simulated next? Because Trevor Zegras's was definitely the best that we've had so far. A lot of personal hardware, one Stanley Cup, very consistently having a presence in the playoffs as well. Nothing short of a pillar and cornerstone of the Ducks franchise for all of those playoff runs, that Stanley Cup victory, wearing the C on his jersey as captain of the team for about a decade as well. Just a huge, huge piece on that Ducks team. Then after all those years in Anaheim, he bounced around the NHL a little bit, went on a couple playoff runs, searching for another Stanley Cup, put up great numbers along the way, was a great veteran presence as well. So he definitely will be leaving his mark on the NHL. Anaheim definitely could have had a few Stanley Cups, in my opinion. They probably could have won maybe three, if not more, if they could just the management could have gotten together and, you know, maybe signed an actual goalie or some defensive third pairs, guys like that, who were there in free agency and they had the salary cap to do it. So unfortunately, you have to take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt here in the EA NHL simulation. For the most part, I do see it fairly realistic that he would spend the big majority of his career in Anaheim, do some great things, set them some franchise records, and then later in his career, sign some one-year contracts, get moved around a little bit, looking for another ring. And even though he never got more than that one ring that came semi-early on in his career, definitely left his mark on the league, both in its future players that will be coming and on the history books. It made a ton of money, as you could see as well on this graphic. Just the man is rich. He is not going to be worried about that, with about money anytime soon, especially now he's going to be a scout making a lot of money. Don't need to worry about Trevor Zegras. So he has a lot of potential, he's going to do great things in the NHL, and I look forward to coming back to this video someday and seeing how he lived up to the EA potential that has been bestowed upon him. All the links for everything you need to know are down in the description. Once again, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.